This video talks about a very important concept in propositional logic called logical equivalence. Two statements are intuitively equivalent if they mean the same thing. In propositional logic, we say that two compound statements are logically equivalent, and we write that with a triple line if their truth tables are identical. So this means that they will have the same values no matter what the values are of the propositional variables that make them up. We'll explore this by looking at three different important examples where that we will use to show that statements are mean the same thing or are logically equivalent. So the first of these is De Morgan's Laws. De Morgan's Laws basically state a relationship between the not operator and the conjunction and the disjunction operators. So the first De Morgan Law says if you take the negation of a disjunction, that's logically equivalent to the negation of the first logical variable and the conjunction with the negation of the second logical variable. So in other words, as we take the not sign inside the parentheses, it changes the sense of the conjunction or the disjunction. And the second De Morgan's Law works the same way. So let's see how we go about proving that the De Morgan's Laws actually hold, namely that these two different compound statements are logically equivalent. So what we do is we write out the truth table and again systematically we write down the different values for P and the different possible values for Q so we get all possible combinations. And then we compute what the value is for the left hand side of the logical equivalence so not P or Q and by doing that, we get P or Q. We look at P or Q. That would be true for everything except when both things are false, and then we take the not of that. So we invert it. So everything is false except when both P and Q are false. In a similar way, we compute the value of not P and not Q. And when we do that, we see that we get exactly the same logical values. So you should go through and verify, make sure you understand where these different logical values come from for the left hand side of the first De Morgan's Law and the right hand side of the first De Morgan's Law. The second important example that we want to look at is the relationship between the conditional and the biconditional. And this one I think is pretty obvious um, and it's set up to work this way, of course is if we look at the truth table for the biconditional, in other words, that's again, that's P if and only if Q, that's going to be true whenever P and Q have the same truth value. So if both P and Q are true, then P if and only if Q is true. If both P and Q have fa are false, then P if and only if Q is true. Otherwise, when they have different values, P if and only if Q is false. Now, what we want to do is we want to show that that biconditional is logical equivalent to both the conditional P implies Q with conjunction Q implies P. So in other words, if P implies Q and Q implies P, that should mean the same thing as P if and only if Q. And indeed, if you work through the truth table, again, giving all the different values for P, all the different values for Q. P implies Q, go back and remember, that's going to be true for all different values of P and Q except when P is true and Q is false. And Q implies P, that'll be true for all the different values of P and Q except when Q is true and P is false. And that gives us that as its set of values. And then finally, we can con the value of the conjunction of P implies Q and Q implies P, and we see that that will be true 
when P and Q both have the same truth values and false otherwise, which is exactly the same as the way the biconditional works. The third example, and perhaps the most important one for us, is the contrapositive of a conditional proposition. So I need to make some definitions. Suppose we have a proposition of the form P implies Q, so it's a conditional. Then that's going to be logically equivalent to not Q implies not P. Notice that we've taken the negation of each of the component propositions in the conditional, and we've reversed the order. So P, the first thing, is usually called the premise, and Q is the conclusion, and so we've reversed the order and we've changed, we've taken the conclusion over here and made not the, that into the premise over here. So if we can show these are logically equivalent, which we'll do in a second, this means that proving one true means the other are true. And this, we're going to use this over and over again in proving things. So this is really a key thing. And we call, again, not P implies not Q is a special name. We call it the contrapositive. Okay, contra, meaning against the positive. And you can sort of see we're taking negations and then flipping the order. So it's sort of contra to the original thing. Notice that the contraposit you don't have a contrapositive sort of existing on its own. It's the contrapositive of something. In other words, you start with a logical proposition and then you get a contrapositive of it. So you're specifying the relationship between two implications. There are other relations between pairs of implications, but I'm not going to worry about those right now. Um, we might come back to them later. Um, if you ever take a more extensive logic course, you'll run into them quite a bit. Right now, the important thing, though, is that you focus on understanding the what the contrapositive relationship means between two different conditionals. In class, we'll go into this in a lot more detail, but right now, let me just give you an example of the contrapositive, and so you can have some practice in terms of what it might mean and how things might work. So let's start out with a conditional statement. If the password is incorrect, then access is denied. So what is P in this statement? In other words, the premise, and what is Q, the conclusion? The premise is going to be the password is incorrect. The conclusion, Q, is going to be access is denied. So then, to form the contrapositive, we're going to want to form not Q implies not P. So what's not Q going to be equal to? Well, remember, Q was equal to access is denied. Okay, so not Q is going to be the negative of that. So access is not denied, or you could say access is granted. What about not P? Not P is going to be the negation of the premise, P up here. The password is incorrect. So not P is going to be the password is not incorrect, or you could say the password is correct. Thus, the contrapositive, not Q implies not P, is just taking these things that we figured out up here. We can fill them in down here. If access is not denied, then the password was not incorrect. Or, translating that, getting rid of all the double negatives, if access was allowed, then the password was correct. This is the sort of thing we'll have to do over and over again in using the contrapositive's logical equivalence to the original conditional statement to prove uh, that the, the original statement was true. So we'll get, you'll see lots of examples of this next week. So finally, what should you take away from this? You should be able to answer these follow the following questions. What does it mean for two statements to be logically equivalent? You should be able to show either one of De Morgan's identities by setting up the truth tables and showing that the truth table for the left-hand side is the same as the truth table for the right-hand side. 
You should be able to define what the contrapositive of P implies Q is. So you should be able to ask yourself right now, do I know what, can I, can I write that down in symbols? What are the symbols for the contrapositive of P implies Q? And then you should be able to do, work through, just as I did in the last slide, an example. So what are P and Q in the following conditional statement? If two processes collide, the data will be corrupt. And then once you're able to do that, once you're able to sort out what P and Q are, then you should be able to write down what the contrapositive of the above statement should be.